Hey guys, welcome back to Undercase Show. This is Phil and this is the Galaxy A5 2016. So this is the mid-range model and Samsung has made it look a lot premium than ever before. So let's take a look. There's a Samsung logo receiver and the front facing camera along with the five inches of a full HD display, multitasking home and the back key that of course lights up. And the home key over here that doubles as a fingerprint reader and on the right there's a power key, bottom micro USB port, earphone jack and the speaker grill, eh, that's not really good quality of a speaker though. There's a microphone and there is a secondary microphone on top, nothing else than the two lines for your antenna. On the back there are, there's camera, LED flash and the carrier logo, Samsung logo and the front and back, both front and back are covered in glass. This is by far my favorite way of covering the phones up and those are even 2.5D glasses so edge of those things are curved giving you a much easier pull up when you're pulling your menu bar from your especially material design apps. So size comparison wise this is a 5 inch so this should fit to most of people. There is a Galaxy A7 2016 5.5 inches and Galaxy A9 at 6 inches. Now Galaxy A9 is definitely a big phone, it's a phablet but Galaxy A5 and 7 they're okay. So it's very well built and I really like how it look but let's take a look at the internals. So you can hold your finger onto the fingerprint reader to unlock the phone, you can use the pen. And here's the, here's the Samsung TouchWiz interface. They have made the lightweight TouchWiz interfaces and there's nothing special really. Uh, it's got a lot lighter and especially the function that I really like about the new TouchWiz is the themes. Not only that is supporting the themes but also the themes, especially the ones that work as an exclusive for A series, look good as well. So I downloaded and installed the simple black and it changes almost all of the icons and the color themes as well. So here is the color scheme that you see on the icons and on, on, on the notification bar and also in some apps, the built-in apps, the colors all, all changed and it goes really good with the black color scheme of the phone. TouchWiz itself doesn't really bear much uh, of the new things but what is running under here is something new. It's running with the Samsung's in-house Exynos 7580 processor which is a really powerful CPU with not so much of a GPU. So if you're a hardcore 3D gamer then this should be a little bit of a problem but if you're not this should work with pretty much any kind of everyday work that you do with your phone. Everything is pretty snappy and especially with the lightweight touch points, nothing is really slow. But I did figure out that the Galaxy A5 is slightly slower than the A7. I don't know why because it's got the same resolution and the same CPU with the same clock. But it's slightly slower than the A7. And also with 1GB less of the RAM, it refreshes when I'm multitasking around the apps a lot more often than the Galaxy A7 has shown me. So that's a little disappointment because I didn't thought that one gigabyte of RAM would make such a big difference, but it actually did. And you should also note that the A5, well, the entire A series, unless you go for the A9, is missing the haptic feedback. So you don't get the tactile feedback when you're uh, tapping on the button there or when you're punching in the numbers onto the dial pad there. Another thing missing on the Galaxy A5 and the Galaxy A7 is also the screen mirroring. So if you'd like to cast your sh uh, TV shows from your phone to TV, this would come into a big inconvenience. The camera on this guy is actually really easily accessible by tapping twice on the home key. It brings you right into the camera and there are some modes over here. There's Auto Pro and you can even download more from the store over there. And there is even pro mode where you could adjust white balance. There's not really much. It's not the full pro, but white balance, ISO, and the exposure if you want to. The photo quality, unfortunately, isn't that good. It definitely is better than most of the mid-rangers, but especially on the low lighting conditions, there are lots of noise and um, there are the quality wasn't really on par as I expected. This is definitely not the flagship level of the photo, so don't expect too much on this. But don't you worry because you're backed up by the amazing battery. So it's a slightly smaller battery than the Galaxy A7 because it's got a 3300 milliamps with the larger screen and the 2900 milliamps. Uh, without any power saving mode, I was able to gain about five and a half hours to six hours of the battery on time. Uh, and um, it was without any power saving mode, so if you turn on some power saving or if you have less apps than I do, then you should be able to gain more out of this than I did. And this is also backed up by the quick charge or the fast adaptive charging, that's what Samsung is saying. Uh, so you should be able to fill up your battery from 0 to 100% within two hours and just about enough to last about a day within an hour anyway. 
And also, if you're living in the area where they support the Samsung Pay, you can use this guy uh, linked up with your credit card to pay at almost virtually any credit card accepting st stores. With all these goodies, there is something more that is missing. The speaker isn't that good with the chambered aluminum chassis. I expect there's some what more of a good quality from this guy, but unfortunately it mumbles around and meh, it's not that good of a quality. But don't worry because wired or wireless earphones sound totally fine. But before you go, the Galaxy A5 is definitely a new approach to the mid-ranger. They packed in most of the things that they only had exclusively for their flagships like the Samsung Pay, fast charging, and amazing battery, especially along with the micro SD card expansion as well. But here's the catch. The Galaxy A7 isn't much more expensive than the Galaxy A5, especially when you're getting something that you'll be using for the next two years. This isn't really much of the price gap. And for that thing, if you're not that picky about the sizes, because I really like the size of it, then you should go for the Galaxy A7. I would have stopped you if you want the Galaxy A5. It's a, it's a good phone. But the Galaxy A7 is so much of a better phone. With one more gigabyte of RAM and much more battery, it does make the differences. So consider that. All right, so we have dealt with the Galaxy A5, 7, and 9. Uh, sorry we didn't have the A3. We'll, we'll try to cover that when we get a chance. But um, 5, 7, and 9, 5 inches, 5.5, 6 inches. They're all good phone, but my personal favorite would be Galaxy A7, sorry. We were talking about the Galaxy A5. So my verdict over here is that Galaxy A5 is definitely a new approach to the Meme Ranger, and it's definitely worth buying, but I'm getting the feeling that Samsung has built the Galaxy A5 to sell more of the Galaxy A7 because of the comparative advantages if we talk economically. All right, so that was a brief look at the Galaxy A5 2016. It's a beautiful phone. All of them are beautiful phone in every single colors. I hope it helped, and we'll see you guys later. Until then, you can meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And we'll see you again. Don't forget to subscribe. Ciao.